Space and Equipment Planning System and SketchUp webinar. We'll be starting shortly. Thank you for joining us. This webinar will be recorded and posted on the seps to bimorg website and accessible after the webinar. So welcome and thank you for joining us today. This is presented by Gary Technologies, SketchUp, Trimble, and Onuma Inc. Presenting today will be Dennis Sheldon from Gary Technologies, Devin Sparks from Gary Technologies, Ryan Gear from SketchUp, and myself, Kimon Onuma from Onuma Inc. This webinar, webinar will run for one hour and we'll have uh, question and answers at the end of the webinar. Uh, if you have a question even during the session, please type it in the chat window of the uh, GoToWebinar chat on the right side. So today we will be running through several topics. We will be showing uh, a SketchUp uh, and the results of the SEPS, the Space and Equipment Planning System data moving into SketchUp. And there will be an introduction about uh, what the overall um, strategic plan for, Sketch for SEPS has been uh, with the VA and the Department of Defense, DHA, and the involvement of the uh, National Institute of Building Sciences and Onuma Inc. as a consultant on that project. One thing we would like to make clear is that today's webinar is going to be talking about the work that was done with VA, but this is an independent webinar presented by these companies on the screen right now. So giving a little bit of background of the, uh, the Space and Equipment Planning System um, that the Department of Veterans Affairs and the Department of Defense, Defense Health Agency uses, um, there are um, experts that collect information about what needs to go into a standard space and equipment for designing in, in a hospital or a clinic. And uh, traditionally, a lot of this information has been gathered in formats that is not digital or is digital and is very difficult to get to. Um, the Space and Equipment Planning System Strategic Plan focused on how do we get this data into a more data-centric format and web-enable it. And there was also a goal of making it into a format that other consultants and other vendors can actually consume the same data rather than having to export it in a PDF or an Excel file and import it into other formats. And moving away from static documents, whether they're um, hand sketches or uh, PDFs, the the value of these uh, documents is the knowledge and information that's placed into them as far as what goes into a dental exam room, for example, what type of equipment goes in to the room. The VA uh, Technical Information Library has a wealth of knowledge that's been collected over the years, um, and a lot of that has made its way into SEPs, and this uh, information has to be constantly updated. There are new uh, ways of managing healthcare uh, planning, and this information needs to be updated over time. And it's millions and millions of data points. And the goal is, if we think of data in terms of uh, a way that can be automated, the updating of information that can flow to the design teams and helps the owners, uh, whether it's VA or DHA in this case, or any healthcare or any owner for that matter, how does an owner communicate their requirements to design teams, and how do um, consultants and architects, engineers, planners, medical planners, medical equipment suppliers, uh, software uh, developers and vendors actually work with that data. And that's, you're going to be seeing the first uh, result of that today. It's actually a pretty exciting milestone. This is the first presentation where we're actually showing the result of another vendor, in this case SketchUp and Trimble and Gary Technologies, actually working directly with the data that was part of the overall process of the, um, the SEP strategic plan. Um, Onuma Inc. was actually involved with a project with the VA and DHA through NIBS, where we actually looked at the, uh, the space and equipment planning system that's been on uh, being used by DOD uh, and VA for many years now, and guided it towards what happens if you web enable this, and not only web enable this, but make the data inside SEPs accessible to the outside world and the more. Uh, consistent and easy way to get to. So part of the data is about the standards. So for example, in a dental exam room like this, how big is the room and what type of equipment goes in here? And that is the type of information that is in SEPS as a database. And that was a perfect um, platform to start the discussion from because if it's in the database, you can start moving it into other formats. 
One important point about SEPs and, and even the requirement documents from an owner is this is a starting point. This is a not automating the final design. The designers, uh, architects, planners, engineers, medical planners still need to make decisions with this. This is a, a recommendation of what would go into a dental exam room, but the design obviously is going to morph as the project progresses and becomes more specific. We also want to make a point, and we'll repeat this again later, that these objects are generic objects. They're not product specific intentionally. Um, and you'll see this more as we open up some of the actual objects themselves. Uh, once you start getting into the actual operational part of this, the SEPS data can be the basis for what ended up going to the design and construction process. And that's another presentation. There's a lot of material online, so we will not be repeating. This is publicly available online. And we'll give everybody a link to this of what the background of this was. So it was part of an overall larger vision of how do you move this data throughout the life cycle. But today we're going to focus on what do we do with the SEPS data as we start working with design teams and as we start moving it into, into SketchUp. So one important point is that the, uh, the VA and DOD DHA actually assemble experts, subject matter experts, that know about how to uh, design standards for a, a dental exam room. Let's use that as an example again. Um, there's a lot of effort into collecting the latest information that's out there as far as medical practice goes and uh, equipment and assembling all that into documents and then converting those documents into data that goes into SEPs. So as part of the strategic plan, we said, okay, if this data is going to SEPs as a database, the data from SEPs can also be used to automatically drive into BIM objects and BIM templates, spaces. Here are the standard default spaces and equipment, so a dental exam room, here's equipment that needs to go into a dental exam room as a default, a default standard. The standards are already publicly available online on the VA site and the whole building design guide, but we're saying that same data should be opened up and not only do you have to be a SEPs user to get to it, but it should be publicly accessible. And the result of that is there are what's called web services, essentially the SEPS database is broadcasting out. Here are the standards that we are using. Here's a list of equipment, here's a list of spaces. And there's millions and millions of data points from that. And data is a very good thing if you look at it from a developer, a software developer's point of view, is you can actually use that data to generate uh, objects in them and move it into projects and automate that process. So that's the part that we're going to be showing today, is how does this data from SEPs actually help not only to create consistency in the BIM objects and the BIM templates, but be used as a starting point for design and construction process. And I want to emphasize again that these are still just the beginning requirements from an owner. It's still the designer still has to make a decision of what needs to go and even change equipment. You might see something in the exam room that says, hey, this uh, boom arm from the ceiling is an outdated object. It no longer is. Uh, this type of boom arm that we're using, the light the lighting fixture is wrong, we need a newer type. That's the designer's task to change that object and make a recommendation in the design process. So using BIM obviously helps to surface this data, and that's what we've seen in our in our work from the NUMA side with NIBS, is that once you start seeing the actual data uh, show up in these objects and templates, you can actually see things that potentially could be an issue, even in the standards. You say, well, this this equipment doesn't really fit in this room. The room says it's 120 square feet, but really you need 180 square feet to fit all these pieces of equipment that are in the database that go into this room. Things like that are starting to surface, and the, um, these tools will actually help to make that more efficient. So we will be showing you the, uh, the objects that were, there's about 900 objects that initially started from a, a, a library of objects that the Corps of Engineers built in Revit, and they're still available. They actually uh, were cataloged and placed on the web on the VA uh, TIL site and the whole building design guide. And uh, the SketchUp team actually took all of those 900 objects and converted them into SketchUp as well. And that's a milestone that just happened a few months ago. So all 900 plus objects, the equivalent objects are in Revit and the equivalent objects are in SketchUp. Again, generic objects, low level of detail, um, models uh, uh, with the SEPs data associated with them. And the same thing with the spaces. Uh, the spaces were cataloged and uh, placed on the uh, VA TIL site and they're accessible. You can either grab them and use them one by one or automate the process and actually use them in, in design uh, tools. So that's the, um, the overall workflow is the, uh, the SEPs database uh, is basically a catalog, a list of things that need to go into uh, a medical center or a clinic or in a single room. 
The SEPS to BIM process automates the creation of those uh, uh, standards into BIM, and then many different tools can be used. So we started by having the Revit templates and objects. They were converted into Onuma system objects and templates on the web, and the Onuma system is used to actually catalog and uh, automate a lot of this uh, cleanup of the data and the setting up of the templates and the utilities that you'll see later on. And we also open sourced some of the tools to SketchUp uh, that Onuma already had to read these XML files coming from SEPS. And SketchUp very quickly uh, was able to, the SketchUp team and the Gary Technologies team was actually a very able to very quickly create an update to the plugin in SketchUp, we will, which we'll be showing shortly on how that works. And there are also other uh, discussions ongoing right now with other application uh, developers. And we actually invite others to, if, if you have a question about how your solution or how your consulting services can link into this, that, that's the exciting part about this. Is the SEPS data becomes the source of information that can be driven equally into any application, whether it's Excel or Numa or Revit or SketchUp or any other BIM application or any other database application for that matter. It doesn't necessarily have to be BIM because the SEPS is basically a list of equipment and spaces and standards that VA and DHA uses. And if the standards change, which they do, that's the goal here. We don't want to constantly be updating objects. The data drives into the objects and drives into BIM and lets the designer make more decisions uh, with that information. The other important point is that SketchUp, uh, we were very excited to SketchUp jump on board because as we all know, as an architect too, I, I see this in the industry, SketchUp is a great tool, a simple tool to do some pretty amazing things that require minimal training. So you don't necessarily have to be a BIM expert, even though it is a BIM tool in my opinion, because it has data associated with it, and you'll see that as well later on. You can actually pull up a space and say, what does this exam, dental exam room look like? And you see it in SketchUp, and you can even edit it in SketchUp if you want. And we've even set up workflows of how do you edit data in SketchUp and then open it up in Revit as one example. If you use a database and a model server, these three tools together, the Onuma system, Revit, and SketchUp actually work in tandem and can move data between them using the SEPS data from uh, uh, the standards. And mobile applications, are that's another way to easily get to data as well. It's important to move this data and regardless of what the application is, we want to see the same data in all the tools. Okay, so uh, I'm going to jump to um, some live things next, but um, what we're going to show is um, how the um, uh, this data actually is used. So everything up until now has been uh, PowerPoint, but I'm going to jump into showing some things live next. So to start off, um, there's the VA Technical Information Library, and there's a new section on the VA Technical Information Library that's public now. Uh, if you go from the uh, uh, Technical Information Library to the software requirements on the right side, you'll come to the section called SEPS to BIM Training. And there's a great introductory video there, like a five-minute video that gives you an overview, a very high-level view of that, as well as uh, what we call the part one and part two training on how to train the department update architects and engineers and consultants that work with updating standards for the VA. Um, and there's other information here as well, technical information, technical training, and short videos of how to use different workflows as well. This is on the VA site. Um, there's also a separate site called sepstobim.org, and uh, oops, you, all can, you all can jot this down and we'll put it in the chat window as well too if you'd like to link to it. This is public as well too. It gives an overview of, uh, again, the same data of how this was all set up, and it has the videos in here as well, and we also have information about how the objects were set up. So, for example, the objects that I was talking about, the dental chair, for example, and the databases that's a uh, space and equipment database it's called the Numel Standard 1691. It's also online publicly, so you can actually search it. This is part of the recommendations we made on the SEP strategic plan is make surfaces data. Don't distribute it by CD. Make it accessible so that everybody can get access to the same information. This Numel Standard 1691 is hosted on max.gov, um, and the objects that we talked about, Revit, on Numa, SketchUp, are also available. You can download all these objects here. There are templates where you can actually download uh, individual templates in different formats, Revit, Onuma System, SketchUp, or you can actually generate templates on the fly. In other words, instead of cataloging a static BIM template and then going and grabbing it two years later and saying, hey, this is out of date, there are utilities online that goes and grabs the latest SEPS data because it's public, it says web service public, and it generates the latest template, the known template, 
And if there's no arrangement of the spaces, it actually stacks the equipment in the room. But there are about 200 BIM templates right now that are at this level of detail. Uh, the tools section um, shows the different tools. There's three different public tools up here. One is called the Space and Equipment Aggregator. One is the Department Aggregator, where it gives multiple spaces. And another one's actually for projects. You need to log in. There's a free way to log in and try this as well, too, where it actually gets these standards and actually builds a projects from the SEPS data. So let's go into the Space and Equipment tool here. All right, so what I'm going to do next is head towards uh, handing this off to Ryan Gear from SketchUp, who will be presenting how this works in SketchUp. But first, I want to show this tool. And you, you, uh, I encourage everybody to actually try this it's on the sepstabim.org site. It's a very simple tool. Essentially, you're going to be creating a BIM by just requesting a, um, a room type. There's thousands of room types, and if you have access, there's other places on this website where you can actually get the full list. But here's a partial list of room types, and we're going to focus in on this dental room. DNTG1 is the room code. So I'm going to put that in there, and you can actually put a comma and put other rooms in if you want, multiple rooms, and we'll generate a BIM for that. But let's just focus on the DNTG1 to keep it simple for now. DNTG1 is a dental exam room. I hit proceed, and what this is doing is it's sending your request to a, a, an Onuma BIM server. The server is then going and getting the latest SEPS data and then generating a BIM as it's already completed here. <clears throat> and it's going to go and send an email to me. Uh, and from that email, there's going to be a link to go and grab the latest uh, model. So here I just got the email just now. And if I open this up, it loads uh, a site, a website that is a free utility. It says, here's your DNTG1. It just went, it's, we have a, a freshness stamp basically on this because if you go back to this tomorrow, it will say it's one day old and so on. It's basically this was generated on the fly just now of the, the latest known information from the DNTG1 dental exam room on the web. And from here, you can export to different formats. You can say, give me an Excel list of the equipment. Give me a Kobe file. You can actually generate a Kobe file of an entire building or a room like this at the beginning of a project even. Or you can set up a, a SketchUp. So I'm going to export it to SketchUp. And while it's doing that, it actually already generated it. It saved it, downloaded it to my desktop. And I'm going to open up SketchUp. And one thing with SketchUp uh, that I mentioned earlier, SketchUp, the SketchUp team, and Ryan, if you're ready, I'm going to hand it off to you in a second here. But um, the SketchUp team actually set up the BIM objects. There's 900 something objects on the web that are aligned with the MIL standard 16 and SEP. So you can go and download them one by one and actually assemble that assemble a dental exam room manually. It's certainly possible. But the more interesting part to this is how this actually with the new plugin, there's a plugin in SketchUp that the SketchUp team, Devin, who's online, actually worked with the Onuma team, uh, SketchUp and Onuma team worked together to update this plugin to support SEPs. Um, so instead of manually grabbing those, those, uh, that, those equipment one by one, uh, you can actually go into the plugin and, and Ryan, I'll let you go ahead and explain what I'm going to be showing next, if that's okay. So Ryan Gear from SketchUp is online. And we're going to do a very simple operation first of actually grabbing the dental exam room. Ryan, go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. So bring it on in, Kimon. Thanks for the introduction. This is Ryan Gear from SketchUp. I am the content manager there. I focus specifically on creating content for the 3D warehouse that's design ready and uh, real world ready, uh, meaning that you can create a real project with it. And um, we found out about this uh, project recently, and we we understood that there was uh, some Revit content. So we went about the task of looking to see what it would take to bring it into SketchUp, and it and it turned out it was really easy for us to do that. Um, we also maintained all of the data along the way with it, so it turned out that um, we could aggregate things in SketchUp and make a room. And um, uh, we really wanted to enable design thinking with uh, with this tool, uh, at least in SketchUp, and, and something that mimicked what was happening on Numa. And um, knowing that the SEPS data was accessible, we were excited about having that inside the model as well. And um, also knowing that this was going to reach such a wide audience, you know, starting with the clinical staff, the nurses, the stakeholders, administrators, especially for hospitals. Um, um, but this goes 
um, to a wider audience uh, with other owners as well, as Kimo mentioned. And um, so what we're looking at here is one of the uh, rooms. You can see all the equipment, like Kimo mentioned, is generic. Um, but it does have some basic data in the background. And what he's pulling out there is um, a listing um, from uh, the steps database that if you go back into the object you can actually take yourself all the way back to the live database and and see that if you find that up on on the 3d warehouse uh, you can look under each object and you'll see the link there so it's intentionally kept at a low level of geometry um, that's actually um, how it was designed on the Revit side and you know there's consideration because this is going to be a huge hospital and all these objects would add up and um, take up uh, quite a bit of data so um, they're made um, just with enough detail so you can tell what they are and, and even in some cases have already been identified as maybe being out of date, which is, is a great scenario for um, the design teams to, to recognize. So um, we quickly converted those Revit to SketchUp. Uh, we made those available for free on the 3D Warehouse and uh, we found out about uh, Kimon uh, and the Onuma team had already had a uh, SketchUp plugin, but that only had um, spaces. So Devin on our team um, created the ability to bring in uh, the components as well. So now, uh, just to reiterate what Kimon did earlier, is he brought in the BMXML file through that process that you see there on the screen. And what's happening is that um, room was actually populated through an automatic download of objects from the 3D warehouse off of um, the site that you saw earlier with the numerous files. So the files aren't brought along, there's just a, a, a data tag that is associating our files with the subsystem and our files are kept consistent with those. So now um, you can design, copy, modify, and um, we were able then to even take the extension a little farther and um, make it possible to push it back into um, the SEP system for even further analysis and comparative um, reporting and things like that. So One that's, clarification, uh, Ryan, it's not uh, pushing it back into the SEP system, but it's actually using the SEPs data and being able to generate a report that compares it back to the original SEPs output. So the scenario is that uh, uh, the owner, VA, or in this case, would say we, we need a dental dental clinic. Uh, the designer would download without having to understand anything about the technical aspects and the backgrounds. Basically, that push button thing that I just showed you. What does the latest dental clinic look like? Or get an output from SEPs that says here are the requirements. They would then be designing in uh, SketchUp or Revit or wherever, and the IDs um, would be matching what came from. Um, SEPs. So then they, if they change things like I was showing, moving things out or even adding another piece of equipment, all of a sudden you can do a comparison against SEPs. That's kind of the, the main point there. Um, and as Ryan said, this the generation of the space, we basically did it on the fly as Ryan was talking. It pulled, it, it got the, the, the requirement from SEPs of here's a dental exam room, here are the things that go inside it. It then went to the 3D warehouse and grabbed the appropriate object and placed it in the right location in the room. The location that we're seeing here is a default location that, that came from um, the, the latest output from the department update that uh, VA would have. Uh, this is not a final layout. The designer is still uh, going to be making decisions. The room is obviously going to be going into a hospital, into a clinic or whatever, and moving walls and equipment around or even adding other pieces of equipment. And then maybe, Ryan, you can explain that from the, if you're a designer here, you can actually go to 3D Warehouse and even grab other equipment that's not in the, the, the 1691 data, but out of the 900 objects, you can go and grab a striker piece of a, a boom arm or whatever, correct? That's correct. And uh, we're going to have another webinar, like Kimon said, where we go into the detail on uh, more of a training exercise so people can ask questions and, and get into the detail of it as um, they're interested. But it's, it's a fantastic opportunity for the architects, and I'm an architect myself. And, you know, what I see in this is that there's a quick process for me to illustrate to my friends, my stakeholders, my clients, um, being able to make better decisions because I can go through multiple uh, design schemes quickly and, and really go through and find um, the places where the design is broken and, and fix it quickly um, without a lot of effort. Um, it should be said here that if this, if you're just viewing this data, um, 
that, that part is free. Um, SketchUp has a free viewer. So there's going to be numerous stakeholders that just want to understand you know, what does my office look like. They're not going to be making any design changes, but maybe they want to see it like that. And they can see it in the viewer. They can actually see it up on the web. On the, in the WebGL viewers, actually, you can, you can rotate that as well. You don't even need to download anything if you're um, if one of your templates is actually, actually on the SketchUp warehouse. You can see it up there, too. So that's um, right. kind of the process, right, Kimon? I mean, it's, it's really so straightforward. Yeah, this is very simple. And there's a lot more to this that can be done, obviously, but we wanted to start today's webinar with saying this is actually a very simple thing to do, minimal training. You can at least view immediately the, the dental exam room on the web. That's a, a, you know, 30 seconds or whatever to get to this point. Uh, from here, you can uh, do a lot of things. You can even edit it if you open it up in, in the web uh, editing tool that we have online, or you can take it out to other applications like Revit, and we took we just uh, exported it to SketchUp. But this is a, a bunch of data that came from SEPs um, that generated the objects that went grabbed the latest catalog of the location of the equipment that generated an XML file that Ryan showed uh, that we imported into SketchUp. And the, the the most significant thing here is that this data you'll see see this piece of equipment here actually has the the information that came from SEPs in the 1691 database. So there was no need to actually name this equipment or type it in. So your equipment list and your cut sheets and everything uh, of this room would actually match at least the initial output from um, SEPs. And you're still open to adding other pieces of equipment that might not even have existed in that initial import. So here's a Philips, whatever. I just pulled this on the fly from 3D Warehouse. Um, or if you have your own library of objects, then you can swap them out. From a design, from an owner's perspective, and we've seen this over and over again, what really is important is to be able to track the decisions that are made. So if you're making a recommendation to swap out a piece of equipment, every one of these pieces of equipment from SEPs has a unique ID. In other words, it can be tracked. And from a software developer's perspective, having an ID on each piece of equipment is, is you know, what's great about BIM. You can actually see the equipment and you can actually track changes as you're making those decisions. Um, so what we're going to do at the end of this webinar is we're going to send a link to this plugin. It's a free plugin, um, and there are the utilities online for doing exactly what I demonstrated are also freely accessible. We welcome input, but more importantly, we also welcome interaction. We're looking for teams to do things with this data, just like um, the SketchUp Gary uh, Trimble team did. And it was great to be able to do this very rapidly. We didn't have to reinvent the wheel. The data was was already there. Therefore, it was a very quick uh, to actually create these um, objects. I, as we were talking, actually, I created another request with two spaces in it. So that request that I sent originally came and built these two spaces. Um, okay, so um, oh, the other thing that I guess, Ryan, we didn't cover too much is, but uh, sketch, if you go and edit this space, new piece of equipment, uh, because, or even add a new piece of equipment from the 1691 um, object library, you can then from SketchUp actually export this back out and save it back up to a server. In this case, we're using the Numa BIM server. Uh, basically, save an XML file back to the server. And once it's in the Numa system, then you can open it up in Revit as well. So essentially, you're designing stuff in SketchUp that's going to be the exact same objects in Revit because we have the exact same catalog in Revit with exact same IDs. So this this, what, what happens here is that it enables teams at many different level, skill levels, and because as an architect I know this as well, the, the skill is not the ability to run an application like this, like SketchUp or Revit. The skill is to be able to make decisions as a planner and designer. That's what takes the most time. And to get those experts to be able to view this and make recommendations is what's really the value add here. And to be able to use these tools actually creates a huge value add for the owners because you're working with their data in this case. Instead of saying from VA, because we've actually counted the amount of data. If you're designing a million square foot hospital with VA, you get an output from SEPs in Excel or PDF as is typically done. It's millions of data points that then have to get manually entered into CAD or BIM applications. The more of that that can be automated and the more, and because these IDs are now accessible for the first time from SEPs, the BIM applications can, can then use these to make, uh, to automate the design process as far as being able to generate documents like this and work with them. 
and I can't stress this enough, these objects are not the final objects and there are errors and we've actually seen errors that pop up for the first time we're actually seeing these objects and some of them look like they're outdated but because we can see this and we've had comments from, from uh, different stakeholders in the process saying hey this uh, boom arm is out of date perfect time to actually have a discussion about that and let's update it because before it was hidden in a database and it's been used for years and might not have been noticed for a while but now that it's accessible and viewable like this we can actually get a reaction from somebody and say hey wait a minute why do we have two boom arms in this room is that correct and are they in the right location is there enough space around uh, these pieces of equipment because the database in SEP says this room is 120 square feet and it says here's all the equipment that goes in the space now's a perfect time to have that discussion about it Okay, Ryan, anything else? I think we'll switch to the next no, that's, I, I just wanted to reiterate how wonderful it is to be able to know that this data is traceable right from the very beginning to the very end and it stays connected throughout the different systems and processes. So it, it really reduces a waste just in that regard. Um, but there's lots of other opportunities, so we look forward to other people's involvement. Great, thanks, Ryan. So we left off on the SEPs to BIM.org website on this free utility where we created the DNTG One Room. And you're welcome to try this out yourself. You can send you an email and just get all the information. We did not show the department, but if you go to the department tab, the same thing happens here. This is not only a single room, but an entire department, the default department of what do we what do we need for dental service, for example. And if I type my name in here, it goes and grabs the, the last known defaults from SEPS and 1691 about dental service. Uh, the known data basically creates a BIM on the fly of about 30 spaces that can do the same thing that we showed with one space and could take it into Revit or SketchUp again. That's for departments. These are the standards, but there's a third tab. That was That's how fast it actually goes. It's created 30 spaces with BIMs. It's probably about 400 pieces of equipment. Uh, and then if we open it up in SketchUp, we can go through the same process. The third tab is called the Projects tab. This one's a little bit different, but it's exactly the same process in many ways. This one's actually creating a project. So if the VA gives you a requirement for a new project out of SEPS, what's called a BIM Excel export from SEPS. You can actually, and this one you need a password because you're getting into project territory now, but you can actually go and grab that Excel file and do the exact same thing that we showed you with spaces and equipment department. Create an actual project of hundreds of spaces and millions of square feet if you wanted to and move that into the design process. So this is pretty exciting about tapping into the owner's database and from what we've seen, I think this is the first example at this scale of not only seeing the owner's data but being able to link directly to their database and the way that we achieved this it took two years we said okay these standards are public because they're already published on the web as PDF and Excel files why not give access directly to the database so we so developers and, and consultants can work directly with that um, so I'm gonna switch over to Dennis if you're ready yes it might be good right here in this little break to um mention that that SketchUp can actually grab individual rooms out of one of these very large hospitals. Oh yes, that's right. That's a very interesting dynamic here. Um, what's been set up here with all these tools is essentially it's what's called a BIM server. It's a an Onuma BIM server. There are other BIM servers out there as well, which we welcome actually to connect to this. But we use the Onuma BIM server and tools. When you have a server situation, you don't have to download the entire million square foot hospital. You can actually say, well, I, I really only want to look at that dental exam room on the third floor and actually review it. So instead of downloading an entire model, opening up the entire model and navigating to that third floor and getting into the space, you're hitting the server and sending a request and it's a transaction of just that data in that room or that department or that floor. That makes the data in SEPs and BIM much more accessible because you don't have to load a million square foot of BIM to get to one room or one department. And by doing a transaction like that, it's also possible not only to view it, but to start making decisions. We're going to edit that room and move it and make recommendations of edits, things like that. So that collaborative part of BIM is pretty exciting when you think of it in terms of data and not of tools. The tools are important, but the tools, if you look at the SEP strategic plan, it was about how do you connect these tools to the data, the source data, and make decisions. And as we all know, <clears throat> online tools, agile tools, mobile applications have completely transformed the entire world in the last few years. It's really time that that technology moves into the facility world. And this is the first instance of us demonstrating how this can happen with the SEPS data. And Dennis Sheldon, who's online from Gary Technologies, has been a leader for many years in thinking in these terms of how do we move complex data 
in simple ways and complex data with full-blown BIM applications. And uh, Dennis, if you're ready, we're going to open up yep. uh, the mic for you. Thanks for joining us. I know that you're in another time zone, but thanks for joining us yep. today. Thanks. I maybe just pause here for a second. Uh, so um, we're going to talk about a couple, or I hope you can hear me. Um, I'm down in the side of the country. I'm going to talk about a couple of forward-looking extensions to what you've seen and really close the loop uh, about uh, the work that's been done on the web. Uh, so what you've seen is being able to take this very complex data and manipulate it in, a, in you know, a very easy to use uh, BIM, BIM modeler, uh, SketchUp, and uh, to be able to interact with that data as, uh, you know, as an end user, uh, architect, or designer, but also, you know, just as a, as a viewing capability, you can, you have the ability to use SketchUp for free uh, in order to be able to view these, um, these spaces as well. I uh, want to kind of extend that in two ways. So if you're not even comfortable using uh, a modeler like SketchUp and you just want to be able to see these spaces on, uh, on the web, uh, we want to introduce a technology called Trimble Connect, which is essentially this BIM database and viewing capability uh, on the web right from your browser. So uh, let's just kind of look through that a little bit. This is a collaboration system. Uh, and I just wanted to show you, yeah, I guess this is actually probably one of the departments. Uh, it's been loaded up from SketchUp into Connect. And again, right from the web, uh, you're going to be able to download um, that view, that model. And you really need almost no uh, training in 3D, let alone BIM, in order to just be able to start interacting with that. You don't need to install anything on your computer. It's all available online. You can see that basic idea of a fairly large scale uh, uh, department complete with all the equipment uh, in, 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 a, uh, in a viewer that you can navigate. Uh, we're going to just show a couple things so I can, um, it's in a collaboration. Here we're just saying, uh, you know, setting a, a task to maybe have one of the modelers uh, make some changes to it. I can set some, you know, some attributes on that, on that task. When is it to be done? You know, what's the priority around that? And that's going to create, um, you know, essentially an activity or a task that people, you know, on the team uh, will then, you know, receive a notification of that, uh, of that need to make a change. And when they get that change, they can just click right through uh, to that task and it'll pull up that, um, pull up that view and pull up the model automatically. Um, so we're using this uh, for two reasons. One is to create, yeah, an even simpler, easier way to consume, to interact with this data. And I guess I'll just make reference to some of the, the bigger ambitions. Um, you know, I, I don't, I think under under separate uh, discussion, uh, there's been reference to this Fed IFM initiative, uh, which is an initiative to open up um, facilities management uh, applications and data across a lot of government entities. Um, our ambition is, is to uh, provide this, um, this 3D viewing uh, and model-based interaction on the cloud as part of that initiative. Yeah, uh, Simone's pulling up that initiative as well. Uh, I wouldn't say we're all the way there, but again, the, the notion is that by opening up all of these data and, and uh, modelers, uh, interaction capabilities and collaboration to the cloud, um, again, that creates openness to different vendors like us who participate. Um, and uh, and that's available in a, in a very easy way to connect to the legacy systems, new systems, new tools, in a way that should uh, make it really easy and consuming by all. So I guess that's all I'll, I'll say on that. If you're interested, certainly contact me or look at uh, connect.trimble.com or fed.ifm.org. Fed thanks. Thanks so much. Thanks, Dennis, and thanks to um, Gary Technologies and SketchUp and Trimble for being very involved with uh, not only uh, the SEPs to BIM, but the um, Fed IFM initiative. Uh, we really all believe very passionately that this data, as it flows from application to application, creates much more value for the whole industry and for owners. And, and obviously, Connect is uh, at the forefront of uh, pulling all of this into the web and being able to support that collaborative part of it. So one thing with, um, just to feed off of what Dennis said on the Fed IFM is uh, what we identified in the SEPS to BIM uh, strategic plan and the Fed I and uh, the roadmaps that were done for DHA uh, is there's many different um, 
stakeholders with many different hats on, with all interest in the same and similar data from a different angle. So the owners have obviously very specific interest in facility data. The staff that's uh, going to be in that dental exam room supporting the patients, and then even the customers, the patients. Then you have the, the the administrators and operators and architects, consultants, and engineers. We're using BIM, for example, as our architects over here. But that information that goes into the dental exam room ultimately ends up in that customer, the, the patient in the dental exam room, which then supports the owner being able to run, to run a healthcare facility. So all of this is very interconnected. And the point that we're making with all of these tools is from a facility perspective, the technology is already out there to be able to solve this. And it's moved so fast in the last couple of years, it's much, much different than even five, six, or 10 years ago. And the time is really now to, from a facility perspective, to really move the, the level up, to, to move the notch up and really use BIM, not only for that uh, design and construction, but look at it in the larger picture. And the interesting thing about SEPS is that it's really the, the beginning, the, the starting point for getting that data into the project. You're getting all this knowledge from these different users and you're ending up with an exam, a dental exam room. You're saying, okay, what do we do with this dental exam room? Well, we need to, to make decisions about how to lay it out. Does it work? Do we have the right equipment in there? And if the data is static, data, what we call data rot, if it's not fresh, if you pull up a BIM that's two years old or five years old, it's really not relevant anymore. It's almost like pulling up a website make a reservation on a, on a plane ticket from five years ago. It's interesting and it's close, but it's, it's not good enough to actually do the design and construction. So the SEPS data, because it's constantly being updated and it's a source of truth from the owner, becomes a trigger point of generating these, these models and being able to, to uh, create the output from it that then the design teams can use as one example. And the next step, obviously, as the designers start working with this data and the fact that the IDs are being tracked, they can then um, create reports on the fly pretty quickly. It's, uh, BIM really automates a lot of its mundane work. The scenario is uh, VA says we need a hospital. The hospital is a million square feet. A million square foot hospital has 2.5 million data points. Spaces, equipment, attributes about spaces, attributes about equipment, all that stuff is in the SEPS output. It's impossible to manually track that and say, are we delivering what was asked from SEPS back in a model, but with tools, with BIM tools, you can, and because the data is in steps with IDs, we can start tracking one by one and even color code things red, for example, and say these red items are out of out of sync with what was in SEPS. And as we know on the design side, this is a constantly moving target as well. So it's absolutely impossible to do this without having the right types of tools. And the most exciting thing is that this owner, these groups of owners, have agreed to open up their data to the, the, the facility world out there, the consultants and the vendors out there of their standards. And because that consistency exists, now we can have start having some very, very serious discussions with tools that are, have been around for quite a while to interact with that owner's data and give them a higher level of value back to them. So the takeaway for, there's many different takeaways here, but for the architects and engineers and consultants that work with uh, VA and VHA, this is an opportunity to jump in and make things better because there's a lot of help is needed to tell you the truth on this side. There's a lot of things that obviously over the years have changed and there's a lot of opportunities. So how can we as the architectural community and engineering community out there support that? From an owner's perspective, the fact that this is being opened up and shared is being noticed by even other owners, other healthcare owners around the world like the Ministry of Health in Singapore, which we've also been doing some work with, with others like BIMSCORE. Um, they're taking notice and say, well, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We can actually share this resource of how this is being done. So it's really about this kind of hacking mentality of being able to share information and share approaches, and which gets to my next thing that I'd like to wrap up with. Um, actually, before I jump to that, I wanted to show you the result of that request I sent in for that dental department. This is a dental department that was built on the fly with several hundred pieces of equipment that could be output to SketchUp again, uh, or to Revit, or to Kobe. So at the very Starting point of a project from the SEPS output, this already is a Kobe file that is structured and ready to be filled in with more information as the design progresses. Essentially, this is the owner's BIM standard embedded in a BIM that gets handed to the design teams. And the challenge really is that this is the very first beginning point. There are uh, anomalies and things that need to be cleaned up in the database, but because we can actually visualize this and see this, this is a chance for consultants to actually work with the VA and help move the bar on the department updates that are happening constantly. Department updates about standards 
should not be done without them. Absolutely not. That's our opinion that if you're doing this manually, it doesn't make sense anymore in this, this day and age. So this is a chance to actually react to that and help owners with this, this data. Okay, so let's go back to a couple of things here. I want to um, actually ask you, maybe um, I'll, I'll post this in the, um, the link in the, um, the chat box here. Uh, maybe, Young, you can send it to everybody on, online. If you look at the uh, GoToWebinar chat box, or if you just go to a browser and type concepts to bim.org, um, since we have a little bit of time here, I want to do one simple exercise before I get into the next part here. Um, if you go to sepstabim.org and you go to the Space and Equipment tab, this is the one that I showed earlier, and you'll see this little interface. And this works on the iPhones and mobile devices as well, too. This is a request of let's find a space, right? So these, if you scroll down, here's a list of spaces. We use the dental exam room, but you can pick anyone down here. So if you say the operating room, for example, type it in there and put a comma. And if you want another space, just go grab uh, another space here, a conference room to put that in. You can put as many as you want. Put your email address in and hit submit and you can see what happens. You'll get an email with a link back to this file, to the website, to exactly what Ryan showed you. You can actually pull it out to SketchUp. If you're a SketchUp user, we'll be sending everybody that's online right now a link to download the plugin. And you've, if you've done this, you essentially have just created a BIM with the owner's data in real time from SEPs that can then be used in Kobe, Revit, SketchUp, Onuma, and other applications. So congratulations if you're able to accomplish that. It's a very simple task, a few seconds. I encourage you to try it. And if you're really adventurous, you can even try the department request. It's the same thing. It's basically pushing it up to the server. And we, we invite and everybody online to try that either now or after the session is done. So uh, before we get into question and answers, I want to announce one, one new thing here. Uh, this just happened yesterday. We, we opened up this website, this events website uh, page here on the sepstabim.org site. And we have been invited by the AEC Hackathon to participate in this week's hackathon in Los Angeles, uh, which is happening uh, starting on Friday. Um, it's a live event where uh, programmers, uh, developers, software developers, and we're inviting architects as well. We're calling it a BIMStorm Healthcare. We've been involved with BIMStorms for many years. We're basically bringing BIMStorm to the AEC Hackathon and using the SEPs to BIM data as a driver into projects. This is open to anybody. If you want to attend at UCLA, there's a link down here to actually register if you want to join the BIMSTORM team. And we're inviting two different types of participants. You don't have to know anything about the technology or BIM for that matter. If you're a designer and know how to lay out healthcare facilities or equipment, you're the most important player here, to tell you the truth. You have the knowledge about how to pull this stuff together. We're inviting designers and we're inviting software developers, two teams, to this uh, BIMSTORM hackathon. And the challenge is to do exactly what I showed you, but at a bigger scale, to actually design a clinic or a hospital, and to for the programmers, developers that have applications to actually link to that data. We've opened up a web service so you can actually link to it and use that data, and you can read through this about what this is all about. Free to join. If you just want to watch what's happening online, it's free to do that as well to do. And then you select your track or your designer or developer, and the, the, uh, the tasks are outlined here. There are awards and recognition, and we'll have a follow-up webinar that will be presented out to the world as far as the results of this. And this will start this weekend and will continue on. But there's a part of what I showed you today is, is shown here, create the, the spaces and equipment, actually work with a project. We have sample project data from SEPs online as well, interact with teams. And the, the biggest thing about a hackathon is collaboration, share and connect to others on the team. So developers connecting designers, developers connecting to other developers, Show us what you got, um, and, and um, it's really exciting to see in Trimble. SketchUp is involved with it. We also have um, uh, other teams like Striker and Asa Abloy uh, involved. Oh, and I want to also recognize Max.gov that's hosting the 1691 data and SEPs uh, application online, and we have links here on how to get to their data. The web service is public. And Spaywar, the developer of SEPs that actually set up the uh, math, what's called the Master Tables web service, is also linked from here. And we have quite a few others that are getting ready to jump in as well. This was just opened up yesterday. So we invite you to go to the seps site, click on Events, and either watch or jump in. And we're looking for developers and, and uh, uh, designers as well, architects, engineers, uh, 
equipment planners. So with that, I think, um, Simon, yeah, go ahead. I want to make sure we um, let everybody know that it's okay to be remote, even if you're oh. on the other side of the globe. Right, exactly. You can be remote if you join the BIMSTORM team. You can actually log in and we'll, you can participate remotely even with your application or with your input. Uh, and the input could be as simple as sending a request for a space or a department or hopefully getting more involved in the design process or showing us how you link your applications to this because we really are very interested in linking a lot of different applications together and there's, there's ongoing discussions about that already. Um, if there are any questions, I encourage you to post it in the chat window. Um, Young, I don't know if we've had any. Uh, if not, I'll just keep on talking and wrap it up in a few minutes. Um, Simone, I think there's questions there for you. Oh, I'm sorry. Where are they? If you look at your Skype, and then also it, you can pull out the questions tab as well. Okay, so I'll look in the Skype here. Sorry, I didn't have my Skype running on this one. Okay, so we have some questions. Um, Ryan or Dennis, was there anything you'd like to say while, while we start opening up these questions here? No, it, it, I, again, I just want to reiterate how groundbreaking this is, and to me it's, it's kind of like the Internet starting up, and this is an example where once understood and other entities start to share um, in a standard way like this, we're, we're going to see a lot of... Um, Happy collaboration. It's going to be really neat to see this catch fire. Okay, so let's go to the question. That's a great point, Ryan. And it is massive amounts of data that's being processed here. And uh, applications and databases are, are great at crunching data, crunching data and delivering in a format that can be reacted to by the design teams that are using SketchUp as one example. So, question from um, Michael Scarmack, importing data from SketchUp 3D Warehouse into ArcCAD and retain the data is accomplished by using IFC import. Objects imported do not appear to bring in data as directed from ArcCAD or is Kobe an option for round trip? So the question I think from Michael is about how, how to interact with ArcCAD. Uh, we've been talking to other BIM application vendors who are interested in creating links to this. There's an early version of ARCHICAD that has a plugin that can work with some of this, but it needs to be updated. And we actually are looking for uh, Graphisoft or ARCHICAD developers that are willing to jump in and do exactly what SketchUp did. And SketchUp, just to make the point, since Devin's online, Devin, Devin did an amazing job from uh, Era Technologies, Trimble SketchUp. Uh, within a few weeks, we had a first version of what we showed you developed because it was built on top of the plugin that was developed prior by, by Onimo system and we open sourced it. Uh, Devin and their team actually looked at that and built applications on top of that so we're hoping that uh, Graphsoft, ArcCAD and other vendors can do the same. Uh, IFC uh, is a whole other discussion. We use, IFC, IFC is part of this but IFC was not used for the examples that we showed here. It's a much much simpler format. It's an XML file that doesn't need, the, doesn't need you to understand what IFC is. So it's not one or the other but we're saying we used XML here. And web restful web services. I mean, I think I think the short answer to this is the way to connect um, data from SketchUp into data, in, you know, to and from Graphisoft is going to be through the database, which will through you know through the cloud, which will handle all of the you know the management of the of the you know the positioning, the components, and the and the metadata. So, if you just export an IFC. And bringing it to Graphisoft, you know, some of that may come through, but the goal is, you know, the, this web service is going to take care of all that for you. Right. Well, that's a great point, actually. In Connect, you can actually mash up uh, different models, right? IFCs or different format models, and view them. And some of the data comes through. And uh, um, so there's there's many different options, in other words, and a lot of a lot of other things can develop because now we have this data accessible too. So if we wanted to, for example, say we want to see the latest data from this piece of equipment, it's available as a web service. It's loaded up in the report. If you want to go the IFC route and pull in more BIM and see more 3D work and do all that, Connect is a great uh, solution for that as well. Okay, question from Andrew. What version of SketchUp is required for this? Where is the plugin located? The plugin will be emailed to everybody that's online today and we'll be posting it soon on the Steps to BIM site. The version, uh, Ryan, I believe is 15, right? SketchUp 15? That's correct. Okay, good. Um, Question from Chandra. Will this also provide a cost estimate? Um, Steps has some default costs associated with it, but uh, and there are we've had discussions with other uh, application vendors that have cost uh, cost databases. So the, the 
the scenario here is if we're generating these BIMs, obviously if you have a way to react to the equipment and say, well, we have an equipment database that has costs associated with it, then a cost report can be created. And we have been having some very specific discussions. We, we haven't announced it yet, but we have some vendors that have that kind of information that are going to be coming online. Uh, okay, question from Chandra again. What level of bandwidth is needed for Trimble Connect? Dennis or Ryan? Bandwidth question for Trimble Connect. Yeah. Sorry about that. I'll just a, uh, really say, yeah. um, okay. what, you're, what you're ahead. viewing is, is very lightweight data. So um, it's it's extremely fast to download um, you know BIM data from from uh, from the cloud from Connect, and um, you know I, I you can actually try this online yourself. So uh, there's the ability to go to Connect and just you know subscribe for free to test it out. But it doesn't need any anything more than you know than uh, I guess I'd say standard um, you know standard broadband at this point. Right. And doesn't need any any sophisticated you know computer to do this either. Right, and maybe to add something else to the bandwidth question, what's really interesting from SEPS is because there's SEPS itself doesn't have any geometry; it's just a list of equipment, list of spaces, attributes. It's actually very lightweight data. What I was showing you earlier with the department in dental, if you just look at the XML file coming out of that, it's a few hundred k for you know 30 or 40 rooms, and for an entire million square foot hospital, I think we calculated it's about a megabyte plus or something like that, which is insignificant. Um, obviously, when you start getting into geometry and getting into full BIMs and everything, it, it, it's not one or the other, it's both, in other words. You can start with very minimal data and then move into geometry and then have a full BIM model or pull part of the model out, like we mentioned. So a lot of options as far as how to deal with bandwidth. And the interesting thing about working on mobile devices, it forces the issue that we need to keep the bandwidth lightweight. And we've all learned from using our iPhones and Androids is that we want to just be able to push a button and get information about this map at this location. We have no tolerance for multi-hour downloads. <laughs> it's basically, I want this data and I want it now. And if that data is accessible on the web, then boom, you can get to it on the fly. That's that's the goal here. Okay, I think of a question about where the hackathon is. It's going to be at UCLA starting on Friday. If you want to attend in person, you have to sign up for the hackathon. If you want to attend um, uh, virtually, you basically go to the events page and uh, sign up for the BIMSTORM team which is going to be one of the teams at the hackathon. Uh, let's see, any other question? One more question. As new equipment is being designed, how is it going to be transferred into Revit and SketchUp plugin? Okay, so the question was about how these objects were created. The first objects that were created, which are actually linked here from the bottom here, are available, were available in Revit. They've been cataloged. There was about 800 and something objects that were initially created by the Corps of Engineers for the Department of, Department of Defense DHA. Uh, we use those as a starting point. These these are a pretty good starting point. There's there's certain things that aren't great about some of them, but at least they're a starting point if we know what a dental chair looks like, and we can refine it. There's discussions about cleaning some of that up, and then SketchUp. Uh, Ryan, uh, maybe you can touch on that. How long did it take you guys to actually take the 800 objects and convert them to SketchUp? Um, not that long. I think it was within a few weeks or a month or whatever we had them in SketchUp, and then the intent is as new objects come right. online. The ultimate goal is the object should be created at the point in time of that person that knows the most about the object. And what happens in DOD and VA is that there are department update teams that make decisions about operating rooms, for example. Those teams that are assembled have the most subject matter expertise about how does this gizmo that hangs from the ceiling look like that goes in an operating room. They're, they're going to be assigned to build objects that are missing in the um, object library. So if they're not, they come up to an object that's, hey, this object looks wrong, the task is, well, we'll fix it. Uh, it's, the, the actual building of the objects is really insignificant in, in, the, in the scheme of things. The, the most time-consuming thing is actually assembling the information. Um, okay, so we're at the end of the hour. Him, we really want to, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, let me just really quickly add to that. Yeah. So the plugin is pulling uh, the, the models from the 3D warehouse. So as things can get updated, we can just update those models on the warehouse. And then the next time you you run the plugin, uh, you'll get the you'll get the new model. So it's really essentially transparent to you guys. Exactly. That's a very important point. That's the goal here: is that these databases, including these object 
databases are feeding into the plugin that feed into the model that says when you request a dental, you don't have to think about, well, I need to get the latest object. The whole point of all this is it should be as automated as possible so as new information comes online about objects or spaces, it's available to the designers. So we're at the end of the hour here. I want to thank Dennis for, for uh, joining us and Devin uh, in the background who has uh, joined us as well and Ryan from SketchUp. Uh, this is Kimono Numa. Uh, I want to thank the VA and DOD DHA for making this data accessible, for Max for hosting it, for Spaywolf for opening up the web services, for NIBS for having a vision about uh, opening open standards and making connections here. And we'll, we'll be having more technical uh, webinars that are going to be following up, so watch your emails. Join the, um, the uh, hackathon this week if you want to. It's, it's a great way to learn because it's going to be open. We're going to be sharing everything that we know how to do things. So it's a great place to show what you can do and also to learn. This is Kimono Numa on the uh, seps to bim uh, uh, webinar for SketchUp. Thank you for joining us today. We will be posting this recording on the web. Thank you very much. <laughs>